All right, so again, reminding you of what we've done before with combining like terms. Some of you, when we're solving equations, you're still combining terms together that are not like terms, and you're getting these problems wrong. So for this first warm-up problem, we have 5 times the quantity x plus 7 minus 7x plus 3. What's the first thing that I need to do? Before like terms, parentheses, right? We need to take care of our parentheses first. Remember, gem dos. MDOS is grouping, that means parentheses are included within that. So what do I want to do with this 5? <laughs> Whatever that thing is, yes, distribute it. So we have 5x plus 35 minus 7x plus 3. Any questions on what I've done so far? Alright, Q1 and Alex have been blocked at you. Alright, so now what can I do now that all groupings are gone? Combine? combine. Yes, combine like terms. What do you what would you like to combine together, Fanya? Very good. 5x and 7x. These both have an x with it, so that means we can combine those together. So 5x minus 7x is negative 2x. And then what else can I combine together? What else can I combine together? Oh, so you wanted the phone a friend Abdul going to help you out? Abdul, what can I combine together? Three, and what else? There aren't a whole lot of options. 35, yes. Why are these like terms? Who knows why these are like terms? Right, there's no variable with it. Three, you're right. Good, so 35 and 3 is 38. And this is our final answer here. Why can I not combine negative 2x and 38? Because you don't know what x is. Right, 38 does not have an x. These are not like terms. Some of you are still combining those together. All right, what if I had this? Could I combine anything together there? Yeah, no. No, some of you are still trying to combine these together. But this has an exponent with it, which means I can't combine together. That's what some of you are still doing. Good. Raise your hand if you got this problem right, the first one right. Good. All right, so let's take a look at the second warm-up problem that we have then. 4x times x plus 10 minus 3x plus 2. Alright, again, what do I have to do with that 4x? Distribute. Distribute, good. What is 4x times x? Good, Joe. 4x squared. x times x gives us x squared. Alright, then how about 4x times 10? 41. Good, 40x. x times 1 is x. And then we have minus 3x plus 2. All right, what can I combine together here? Nalman, what can I combine together here? Good, 40x and negative 3x. Again, we can't combine the x squared with it because it has an x component. So 4x squared, 40x minus 3x is plus 37x, or plus 2. These are all different terms, so this is my final answer. Anybody get this one right? Good. Very good. All right. Any questions on the warm-up? All right. Let's take a look at the homework then. Questions on the first four problems of your homework? No. All of it? Okay. All right. So it asks us to find the slope of the graphs. What is my slope? How do I find slope? Good. Good. We take two points and do the loopy loop thing and find how much we rise over how much we run. You have to get up and rise up before you can go running. If you're laying in bed, you can't just start running. You have to rise up out of bed and go running. So your rise is on top. 
Thank you, Joe, for that demonstration. Mm -hmm. And your run is on the bottom. So rise is how much you go up or go down. Run is how much you go left or right. Okay, so for this first one, do you want to get the headphone out of your ear? What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> it's very, very sneaky of you to loop it through your sleeve, but I can still see the red string you on your wrist. Come on, come on. It's still sitting in your sleeve. All right, so we have two points here. We want to find two nice points that intersect nicely here. Okay, so how much do I go up, Calvin? Four. Thank you, Trey. So I went up four. One, two, three, four. And then Nomen, how much? Nomen, how much do I go to the right? Three. Now, is this a positive slope or a negative slope? It's a positive slope. Remember, positive slopes increase as you go to the right, negative slopes decrease as you go to the right. So this is my slope right here, and that's all you have to do. So then with number two, if I think two points, I'm going to use this guy and this one. I went up one, two, three, but I didn't go left or right at all. I did not go either way. But can I divide by zero? No. I like to say that only Chuck Norris can divide by zero. We are not Chuck Norris, thus we cannot divide by zero. Have you guys ever heard those Chuck Norris jokes? You haven't heard that one? Well, Chuck, only Chuck Norris can divide by zero. So this means our slope is undefined. Also, if you remember from our notes before, this is a vertical line. Our vertical line, we have the acronym VUX, VUX. Vertical lines, undefined slope, X equals. So a vertical line has an undefined slope, and my equation is X equals. What is the equation for this graph here? The equation. If I were to write the equation for me. The slope is undefined. What's my equation? Joe, put the earbud out of your ear. The next time I see an earbud, I'm taking the phone and the headphones that go with it for the entire day. Please, please turn off. <laughs> All right, what is my equation for this graph? If it's a vertical line, I have x equals, well, what number are we talking about here? Where is my line going here? Two, three. Negative two, negative two. My point is that x equals negative two, so that's my vertical line there. And you, no matter where you go, you're going to be negative two. Um, guys, also another way to remember it's undefined. If zero is under the bar, it's undefined. Okay. All right, Abdul, you with us? Thanks. All right, so similarly for number three, is this a horizontal or vertical line? Horizontal. So we have the acronym H O Y. Oi. 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 This is Lunes. Oi is Lunes. El Jueve de Noviembre. Okay. See? Yeah, yeah. Dos mil equals. Uh-oh. Okay. How Sorry. about that? Okay. So the horizontal line has a slope of zero and it's y equals. So my line here would be y equals negative three. It's a horizontal line and my slope is zero. So I cannot immediately know that my slope is zero. Yes, <laughs> It's actually zero. And you can't say four. Oh, yes, we can. No, can. Yes, no. Why isn't it undefined? So let's take a look at the math of it. So it's rise over so rise. <laughs> All right, so rise over rise. So now I'm going to get, we're going to pick two points. <laughs> Um, and how much do I go up for a, how much do I go up? Zero. How much should I go over? What is zero divided by four? Zero. So notice the difference here. Zero is on top. So zero divided by anything is zero. Here we cannot divide by zero, so it's not a good one. Alright, 
you guys were doing good. Yeah, All right, so number four here, again, let's take two points. This passes nicely through an intersection. This passes nicely through. So I went down one. Remember, it's rise over run. So down one. And to the right, one, two, three, four. Is this a positive slope or a negative slope? Negative. Negative. Down. We're going down. So my slope is negative. Can you give that help out some comments? Why isn't it one over six? So I picked two points that it passes nicely here. So I went down one and then over one, two, three, four. It's rise over run. So don't look at the, the value there. Look at how long it took to get to the next one. Okay, other questions on one through four? All right. Questions on five or six? <coughs> For this one? Number six. All right, so I'm going to pick two nice <laughs> points. Intersects here. Intersects nicely there. So I went up one, two, and over one, two, three, four. But we need to have the simplest fraction. Uh, so if you put them in your calculator, it reduces to one half. Okay. Other questions? Someone at the door. Let me open it. Yeah, I know. If your zero is in your denominator. denominator, so my two points that I have here is five negative seven, and then this point is five three. So when I subtract, remember we subtract the y's first. So I'm gonna put this is my first point and this is my second point. So I do my y two, so then my second y minus the first. And then my second x minus the first. Here I end up getting a zero in my denominator. Anytime your zero is under that bar, it's undefined. Yes, ma'am. Seven and eight. Seven and eight. Hey, why is the denominator? Why is what? Why is the denominator? Yeah. Four. Because if your x values are on the bottom, it's the y is subtracted on top and the x is subtracted on the bottom. So I subtract my x. If you're having trouble remembering whether the x minus x or y minus y comes on top, remember it's rise over run. You rise on your y axis, your y is up and down. Okay, so let's take a look at 7 and 8, you said, Mom? Which one's going to be your second? This is my first point. Here's my second point. So my 
y value of the second point is 3. And then my y value of the first point is 1. So 3 minus 1. And the, y, the x value of my second point is 5. Minus the x value of my first point, which is 2. So 3 minus 1 is 2. And 5 minus 2 is 3. So I was going to say. Similarly with number 8, we have to first write out our ordered pairs. This is my x value, negative 6. My y value is negative 2. My x value is 1. My y value is negative 4. So these are my two points that I'm working with. Again, just take one of them to be your first point. And one of them to be your second point. It doesn't matter which one you choose as long as you're consistent. So y minus y, negative 2, minus a negative 4 would be plus 4. And then negative 6, minus 1. Negative 2 plus 4 is 2. Negative 6 minus 1 is negative 7. So that gives us our negative 2 second second. So again, your y value subtracted, your x value subtracted. Looking down at 13, so which 13 would you like? Um, Pick one. We don't have time um, to do, I don't have time to do all of your first, homework for you. Uh, the first 13. All right, so here it says find the slope of the line from the equation. Remember, we get in the form y equals mx plus b. Where is my slope in this equation? Which piece of this is my slope? The negative two thirds. The negative two thirds, yeah, my n. My n is my slope. The b is my y intercept. We'll be dealing with the y intercept today. So my slope is whatever is in front of the x. So that's my slope, negative two thirds. Now let's take a look at, let's go and just do this number 13 as well, because this is. A little bit more trickier than the fourth. So here it's not in y equals, so we need to get in y equals 4. So I subtract my 2x. Let's cancel out. I get negative 4y. Can I combine 8 and no. negative 2x together? Why not? Because Yes. They don't have like terms. This has an x. Equals 8 minus 2x. Yep. But we do like to write it in this form yeah. with the x in front. So it makes it long. Divide by negative 4. So I get y equals negative 2 divided by negative 4 is 1 half x. And 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. So again, here is this. So that's a similar thing that we do for 15. We want to solve for y. So I get 5y equals negative 1 6 x plus 1. I subtract my 1 6 x over. Then divide by 5. I get y equals negative 1 6 divided by 5. It's the same thing as multiplied by 5. So it'd be ne or, uh, negative 1 6 divided by 5. The same thing as multiplied by 1. So negative 1 30 <laughs> plus 2. Oh wait, 15 you had a different one, didn't you? Did it say one half x? What did your equation one say? Half x plus okay, I'll do that one, sorry. I forgot, for some reason our key was a different sum. You said one half x plus three y? Equals six. Equals six? Alright, so one half x plus three y equals six. So again, same idea, I subtract my 1 half x over. And I get 3y equals negative 1 half x plus 6. Then divide by 3. These reduce, so I get y equals negative 1 6 plus uh, 1 6 x. So your slope would have been negative 1 6.
Again, negative one half divided by three is the same thing as negative one half times one third, which gave you that Excuse me, Sharon. What was your question? Um, did you have a question? No, I got confused. I got it right next to You got it. Okay, good. All right. Go ahead and clear off your desks. We're going to take the mini quiz now. Is this you, Cuba? Huh? Is this you? Yeah. Alright, so our notes for today, we're going to talk about slope-intercept form. We've already briefly touched on this last class, where we talked about what it was, but we didn't show you how to graph using it. Alright, so today we're going to take a look at how to graph a line using slope-intercept form. Does anyone remember what slope-intercept form is? They have their foldable from last class where we talked about our slope intercept form. Oh, yeah, I do. You do? What was it? Oh. What are you saying that question? What is slope intercept form? Where it crosses the x-axis. The intercept is where it crosses the x-axis. Our slope intercept form is y equals mx plus b. Remember seeing that? We were able to find our slope out by putting in slope intercept form and looking at our x value, the number right in front of x. So I want everyone to be writing this down. Oh. y equals mx plus b. Alex, go ahead and write this down. Okay, Sean, you'll be right. Okay. All right, so my n, that is my slope. All right, and remember, slope is rise over run. To rise up out of bed before you can go running. So rise over run. How much we go up or down, and then how much we have left right. All right, and then our b value. This is my y-intercept. My y-intercept is where it crosses my y-axis, and we have our x value is zero, and then our y value. So b becomes that y value for my y-intercept. All right, so we have the graphing song here. Um, I'm not exactly sure this song was given to me, and I don't know Mistake. what song it goes to. I thought the Hokey Pokey, but it seems like there's a line missing. So we'll look into that for you, and then uh, he wants to that he'll sing it for us next class. What? <laughs> All right, so... The graphing song here is essentially telling us that we're first going to plot our y-intercept. Your last number first. Your last number is your y-intercept. That tells you how much you go up or go down on your y-axis. Then your slope needs to be two numbers. If it's already a fraction, great. If it's not a fraction, let's say that my equation was y equals 2x. Make your slope into a fraction. 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. Right? Because this will tell us how much we go up and then how much we go left right. So the top one tells us how much to go up or down, and the bottom one tells us how much we go left right. I don't know if I want to listen to it. Alright, so let's take a look at that first problem. So here we have four different equations. Four different equations. And we want to find out the slope and our y intercepts for each one. Alright, so here's my equation. I want to find my slope and y intercept for each one. Remember your slope. Where is my slope key one? Um yeah, but the y. Take a look at what we just wrote down. Yeah, it's yeah, and next one's me. Which part of that's my slope? Um, the M. The M, what's right in front of my X values. So my slope for my first equation here is one, one half. half. So right, M equals one half. You say M equals, so I know that we're talking about the slope. Is it always in front of the X? Yes. It's always the number in front of your X. So if nothing is in front of the X, it would be one. Yes. 
Trey just brought up a good point. If there's no number in front of my x, that's a coefficient of 1. So my next equation, what's my slope here? 4, 1. 1. All right, what's my next equation slope? Negative. Negative. And my next equation? M equals 3 over 1. Yeah, M equals 3 over 5. So that means I'm going to go up 3 and to the right 5. Make sure you include the negatives if there is a negative with it. Make sure you include that negative if there is a negative with it. Uh -oh. All right, my y-intercept. Stop. So do you remember which part of my equation is my y-intercept? Two. What did we just write down? Good. B is my y-intercept. So that last number is going to be my y-intercept. Again, make sure you have that negative with it. We write our y-intercept as an ordered pair. Some of you on your last quiz were not doing that. You need to write it as an ordered pair. So my y-intercept is 0, negative 2. Okay. Isn't 0 always in front of it? Yes. For your y-intercept, your x value is always 0. All right, so my next equation, what's my y-intercept here? Zero and four. Good, zero comma four. It's a positive four, so my y-intercept is four. Isn't zero a negative? Yes, good. Whoa. Zero negative three-fifths is my next y-intercept. We have to take that negative with it. Very good. All right, anybody know what that last equation's y-intercept is? One. Raise your hand if you think it's what? All right, what else do we think no. it is? Four. Four. Raise your hand if you think it's four. Nice. All right, what else do we think it might be? Seven. Zero. Zero? Raise your hand if you think it's zero. The correct answer is zero. What? If I don't have any number on the end, we're adding nothing to it, right? Plus zero. So my y-intercept is zero, zero. What is this called on my graph? Where is this on my graph? The center. What's the name for that? The origin. Good. Zero, zero is at my origin. All right, questions on this? Zero, zero. No, you can have a seat. Oh, yeah. Have a seat. All right, let's take a look at our first problem. So this is to graph the equations using the slope of y-intercept and identify the domain the range. I love these problems because they're so simple. It's so quick and easy to graph these lines. Before we made you get out a table and plug in x values, substituted x values, do a bunch of math and find your y values, it's so much easier now. What is my y-intercept for this equation? Four, negative, four. negative 4. This is my y-intercept, which is the point 0, negative 4. So let's plot that on our graph. If you want, would you like to come up and plot your y-intercept for us? Wait, no, go over. Oh, this is zero. Yeah, that's zero. And then we want to go down four. Four, right there. Boom. Just circle. Put a box. Yep. Very good. Beautiful. Thank you. I'll take it. All right, so we've got our y-intercept. Okay, so what is my slope then? Right, very good. My slope is 2 over 3. This is my slope. 2 thirds. Is this a positive or a negative slope? Positive. Positive. So it means we should be increasing. It looks something like this. All right. Again, the top number is my rise, how much I go up. And my bottom number is my run, left and right. So I go up 2, 1, 2. And then I go to the right 3. 1, 2, 3. There's my point. So again, I went up two, one, two, and to the right three. One, two, three. 
individual point. Okay, any ideas as to what my domain and range might be? Anybody have an idea as to what domain and range might be? Uh, X is Y. Domain is X. Joe? What is my domain? My X values, but what is my domain? So, uh, yeah. Neg, I mean, two, three. Yeah. Just two? And just three? Do we have only this point and only that point? Zero. Yeah, we have zero, but negative do we only three. have zero? Zero, negative three, negative three. Zero, negative three. <laughs> zero. Negative three, negative three. Six. Seven. All right, but what about this point? And this point, 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 and this point. If I have everything, what is it? All real numbers. Guys, we have every single x value represented in here. Yes, I have zero. Yes, I have negative three. Yes, I have three. Yes, I have six. But I have every single dot in between. This is going up and to the right forever. This is going to the left and down forever. If it's going to the left forever and to the right forever, we have all of our x values. That means my domain is all real numbers. If you have a solid line, and it has arrows on the end. Your domain is always going to be all real numbers. Alright, so Trey, what do you think my range is going to be? It is your y values. What y values do I have? We have a lot. Are there any y values we don't have? No, we have everything. This goes up forever, and it goes down forever. So if I have all of my y values, what is it's that? R. It's all real numbers. Again, as Ms. Charlotte said, our lines so far this year are going to be all real numbers. If it's a solid line that has no breaks in it, and it's going down and up to the left and to the right, then it's going to be all real numbers. Let me drop all the ones. Do an R, and then put an additional line next to it. Remember, it also has that arrow on the end for it to be all real numbers. Mm -hmm. Now, do be careful. Our horizontal and vertical lines aren't going to be all real numbers for everything because my vertical line does not go to the left and right. And my horizontal line does not go up and down. So my domain for my vertical line is not going to be all real numbers. It's only going to be the single value here. And my range for a horizontal line is not going to be all real numbers. It's just going to be a single value. We've done some of those already. But we might the other one working. So for your vertical line, it would be your domain is equal to negative one, but 
the range of the yellow number. Yeah. And same for my horizontal line. My domain with yellow row numbers, and my range would just be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, let's take a look at our next example. I mean, here we have negative 3 fourths x plus 2. All right, Rachel, what is my y intercept? Good, my y intercept is 2. So let's go and plot 2. Oh, Alright, and then Alex Hernandez, what's my slope? Good, my slope is negative 3 over 4. That negative means I'm going to be going down. either to the left or down. Good. So let's go ahead and let's stick my negative with 3. So it can be either negative 3 fourths or 3 over negative. Only one can be negative. Only one can be negative. Very good. Because what happens if they're both true? Right? What's a negative divided by a negative? A positive. So then we lose our negative. That's why only one of them can be a negative. All right. So it's negative three fourths. So down three. One, two, three. And to the right four. One, two, three, four. All right, or we could do up three, one, two, three, and to the left four, one, two, three, four. So again, my slope is negative three, four. So down three to the right four, up three to the left four. All right, go ahead and connect your dots. Put your arrows on the end, and here's our line. A whole lot easier than before. All right, again, my line is going up and down forever, to the left and to the right forever. So what's my domain? Infinity. All real numbers. What's my range? All real numbers. All right, questions on that? No. All right, go ahead and flip to the inside. I want you to try number three and number four by yourself. Or with the person next to you. You can work to the, with your partner next to you. Why don't you try number three and number four? Yes. All right, my y-intercept is positive one. My y-intercept is positive one. So I plot a positive one for my y value. Now my slope is 2. My slope is 2. But remember, we want to turn this into a fraction so we know how much to go left or right. Right now, I know I go up 2, but I don't know how much to go left or right. Well, 2 is the same thing as 2 over 1. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. So that's my fraction for it. So I saw a lot of you had the right idea, but you went... You made two of your right. You went left and right. We want to go rise over run. Remember, you have to rise up out of bed before you can go running. So rise is up or down. Run is left or right. So I go up two and to the right one. Up two to the right one. Up two to the right one. You can go and draw your line at this point. I like to go and keep doing points from here. Down two to the left. Down two to the left. And again, my line should have a positive slope because my slope is positive. My line should have a positive slope because my slope is positive. So if you graphed yours and it ends up being negative, it means you probably went the wrong direction. Up to the right. Okay, so my domain is all real numbers, and my range is all real numbers. Questions on that one? Okay. Yeah, can you hold it out for every time you say that? You wouldn't really draft two points together. Oh, yeah. Remember? 
Oh, yeah. So from here, what's the other one? So this one. What's the other one? The only one that one. Oh, right. I need one. All right, my next one. Oh, well, what's my y-intercept for number four? Five. Very good. So my y-intercept is five, so I have the point zero five. One, two, three, four, five. And Morgan, what's my slope? Three. Three? three. Just three? three. <laughs> Negative three. Negative three, right. This is my slope. So I need to change this into a fraction, which is negative 3 over 1. Remember, this means that either we go down 3, or I can go to the left 1. Right? So if I attempt to go down 3, down 1, 2, 3, to the right 1, down 1, 2, 3, to the right 1, down 1, 2, 3, to the right 1. If I try to go up 3, I end up off my graph. You can still approximate, though, right. up three to the left. Again, your final answer should have a negative slope because my slope is negative. So we should have that negative with this one. I know, it's, <laughs> it's a little rough looking at the line. Okay, right, questions on that one? Okay. So, so far we've been giving it to you in this nice y equals mx plus b form. y equals mx plus b. But what happens if we have something like number 1 at the bottom of your page? It's not in y equals mx plus b form. So, if I need to know y equals mx plus b form, what should we do? Yeah. yeah, solve for solve for y. Get y by itself so we can have it in that form. We want it to be in y equals mx plus b form. Alright, so let's take a look at what's right above your nose. So we have to solve for y. We want it in y equals form. We want it in y equals. Alright, so our first step, move your x and the constant over. We want to move our x and our constant to the other side of our equation. So let's say that I started off with, um, what problem did I use here? Let's say I did 2y plus 4x equals 8. That's an example. So I'm making this example up. All right, let's say I had 2x, or sorry, 2y plus 4x equals 8. I want to make sure that my x and my constant are on the other side of the equals. My constant is that number that doesn't have an x with it, so 8's my constant here. It's already on the other side of my equals. So I need to move my x over, though. So I'm going to subtract my 4x over, and I get 2y equals negative 4x plus 8. So I need to move my x and my constant over, so I have just y by itself. Kiran, what do you think I would do next to get y by itself? Add home. We want to get y by itself. It currently has the 2 with it. How do I get rid of that 2? Undivided. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Very good. So our next step, we need to divide... By the coefficient in front of x. Mm -hmm. Or sorry, with y. So I need to divide by the coefficient that's with my y. I need to get y by itself, so I divide by that coefficient. That coefficient is a number in front of your term, in front of your variable. So divide by 2 on both sides. Let's reduce. And I get y equals. So I have negative four halves x plus eight halves. Remember, I have two i heart division. 
And so finally, I need to simplify because I need to simplify my fraction series. <laughs> So you could do this in one step if you wanted to here. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2x. And 8 divided by 2 is 4. Is that $1.89 $1.89 per milk? Where? Maybe for a half gallon, not for a gallon. Yeah, it is. For my plug. Every time I want some milk, all he does is this. And I can this. All right, so y equals negative two x plus four. This would be my y equals mx plus b form. What would be my y-intercept for this equation? Four. What would be my slope? Negative two. Good. So that's what we have to do is first get y by itself, and then I can graph it. All right, so let's take a look at number one. What's going to be my first step? Abdul, what do you think my first step is going to be? Oh, it's a half. I'm going to distract it. We do want y by itself. So what do I need to get rid of then? Well, we want to leave 10 over on the other side of my equation. But I need to move this over. How do I move my 5x over? What's the opposite of a negative? Positive. So we want to add 5x to both sides. We want, can I add 10 and 5x together? Oh, no. No, why not? Because they're not like terms. They're not like terms. Why aren't they like terms? Because 5 out of the x. Very good. All right. So then, Alex Tercio. So what's my next step? Very good. Divide by 2. So 2 divided by 2 is 1y, which is just y. And then I have 5 halves x. Remember, because I love division. And 10 divided by 2 is 5. Alright, so here's my equation now. Now we graph it just like we did. What's my y-intercept? Good. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And what is my slope? Good. 5 over 2. If I try to go up 5, I'm already off my graph. So instead of going up and to the right, let's go down and to the left. So down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. To the left, 2. Why was I allowed to go down and to the left? It is the same thing, because down 5 would be negative 5, and to the left 2 would be negative 2, which simplifies to be a positive 5. And so again, down 5, to the left 2. When I connect my dots here, I see it has that positive slope. Again, make sure your slope on your graph matches your slope here. If it's positive, it must be positive for all right, what's my domain range? All real numbers and all real numbers. You just hear what he said. Yeah. I heard that he's going to stop talking, right? <laughs> all right, questions on that one? All right, next problem. <laughs> negative 12x plus 6y equals negative 24. What the deuce? Just like our last one. All right, you all. What's your first step? <laughs> I need to get y by itself. Oh, y by itself. Oh, it's minus six. Before, before, I don't want to move the y over. I want to move everything else. What? I don't want to move my y. I want to move everything else. <laughs> oh. Wow. Yeah, what do we do with the job? Good. Add 12x. Those cancel out. Can I add negative 24 and 12x? No. Hey, did you say maybe? Were you the one that said maybe? We cannot add them together. 
All right, what's my next step? Good, divide by six. Six divided by six is one. One? What's 12 divided by six? Come on, 12 divided by six, you know that. Uh, two. two. Thank you, ladies. And <laughs> negative 24 divided by six? Four. Negative four, good. <laughs> All right, my y intercept is negative four. What's my slope here? No. Two over two. Good, my slope is 2 over 1. Alright, so I can go up 2 to the right one. 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 To so do all the dots? No, it's not necessary to do all the dots. You need to have at least 2. Joe asked a good question. Is it necessary to do all the dots? If it's not, you need to have at least 2 dots. The only thing you do need to make sure of is if it's asking you to find a specific point. So, like, if it was asking you to find the x-intercept, you do have to grab up there because that's only going to make sure you get the exact one. I like to do multiple dots so my line is more accurate. All right, my domain, all real numbers. Range, all real numbers. <laughs> Questions on that? Okay, I want you to try number three on your own. It should take you approximately two minutes. Oh, 
All right, again, your homework is worksheet 10, and then completing the two multiple choice on the back. Have a good day.